Have you ever been wondering, what do you do with all the scrap pasta when you make fresh pasta? All the little odd bits that don't really kind of match the shape you're going for. Or maybe you made too much dough and you just want something quick to roll out, but not having to be quite so precise. Well, luckily that's called Maltagliati. Just means badly cut. And today on iHeart Pasta, I'm gonna show you how to make it. Okay, so we know we're gonna make pasta because the name of the channel is I Heart Pasta. But what do we wanna put with it? Today we're gonna to do a venison and cherry sausage from D'Artagnan. Um, D'Artagnan's been a great supplier for chefs for 35 years. I've been buying from them for a long time and being able to get this product at home has just been a really good, fun way to add flavor to a dish. Venison's got a little bit of game to it, so I wanna pair it with something earthy, which is gonna be our mushrooms. Mushrooms we're just going to brown off and kind of make as a flavor base to carry a lot of umami a lot of meatiness So we don't need a lot of the sausage to act as kind of a meaty filling or a meaty sauce um, We're gonna do a little bit of a sofrito with our vegetables. It's a great flavor base It adds a lot of depth and then we're gonna finish it off with some creme fraiche and this menage butter from from Car Valley. If you don't have the menage butter, that's fine. This is a mix of goat and sheep and cow butter. It's gonna give a nice grassy note. It's gonna help kind of reinforce those gamey notes in the, in the venison and the earthy notes of the mushrooms. Then to give it a little bit of levity, we're gonna do some fresh herbs. We did mint, basil, oregano, and parsley, all from my garden. Um, it's just to kind of help cut all those things. When you, when you have rich pastas, you need those little bits of levity to kind of counteract all that so that's where we're gonna go today we're gonna start by prepping our mushrooms i'm gonna slice them thin but not too thin that way they brown easily but they don't disintegrate i've got a mix of button mushrooms cremini's and shiitake's so next we want to prep our vegetables for sofrito Sofrito is gonna be kind of our flavor base, very similar to a French mirepoix of onion, celery, carrots. We cook them down slowly in olive oil. That way they caramelize and they get really delicious and they create a great flavor base. We wanna dice everything very small in the same size, that way it cooks evenly. And I also like the addition of shallots and garlic to mine, so I'm gonna do that here. So with garlic, we're actually gonna make a paste. It's called hache, it means just kind of a mince. And what we do is we wanna have the garlic and pull out any green that might be in the middle. That green bit can be really bitter and off-putting, so we wanna make sure we remove that first. Then we're going to mince up our garlic, and then we're gonna sprinkle it with kosher salt. I like diamond kosher salt. I think the crystal size is really nice. Um, I prefer it more than Morton's. That's a personal preference though. I would not use the iodized table salt, because it's too fine. And then we're gonna work it into a paste with the side of our knife after we've kind of given it a, a rough chop and we wanna get it all about the same size. So now we're gonna decase our sausage. We're using a delicious cherry venison sausage and it comes as a link. So we just wanna cut the outside of that casing and pull it away. Now 
Now we're ready to brown our mushrooms. We want our pan to be hot, but not too hot. We want to make sure that we sprinkle them in there generously, but not too crowded that they start steaming and they actually start to brown. A decent amount of oil in the pan will really help that along. Also, we want to work in batches. We're going to do a little bit now. Once they get nice and brown, we'll pull them out and then we'll do the next batch until they're all brown. So next we want to brown our meat. The venison has a little bit of cherry in it. It's got some sugar. So we want to make sure that we're moving it around and our pan's not too hot but we're really just gonna kind of brown this like you would any other ground meat. Once our venison's cooked, we just wanna remove it from the pan and I add it to the bowl with the mushrooms. That way all those flavors can kind of soak together. I turn the heat down and add some olive oil. That way I can start adding my vegetables to cook our sofrito. In that same pan, we get all the flavor that's in there. So while our sofrito is cooking, we wanna roll out our pasta. We let our pasta temper because I put it in the fridge the night before. So it's been out for about an hour to warm up to room temperature. And we're gonna roll it the way we normally roll it. Roll it through the roller a couple times, then fold it over, let it laminate itself, and then we're gonna roll it through to our desired thickness. For my roller, it's a five setting. So most of the way, but not all the way. So as you roll your pasta, if it's starting to be a little tacky, dust it with a little bit of flour. Not a whole lot, just enough to make sure that it doesn't stick to the roller or stick to the table. I like to use a wood surface also. It helps pull out some of the moisture from the pasta. And I dust it again right before I cut. That way they have a chance to kind of cure a little bit and firm up so that my roller doesn't stick to it. Now that we have our sheets rolled out, we get to do the fun part, which is cutting pasta. This is the, when all the hard work comes together and you get to actually see the end product. Maltagliati means badly cut. So I cut it kind of like a diamond. So that way they're decent sized pieces, but not too big, not too small. And I'm not really caring too much about uniformity in this. After we're done cutting our pasta, I like to dust it a little bit more and let it dry on the table for a while. It's gonna help improve the texture. We might have been rolling pasta, but we've been stirring our sofrito pretty regularly until we get a nice deep color on it. Now that our sofrito is where we want it to be, we add our mushrooms and sausage back to the pan, let all those flavors kind of come together. I add a little bit of water, probably about a cup, to the bowl that they were sitting in so that all the fat and flavor that's sitting in the bottom of the bowl gets incorporated into the sauce. After two or three minutes of our pasta being in the water, we want to ladle some of the pasta water into our sauce. The water is going to be salty because we seasoned it ahead of time and it's also going to add some starch because the pasta was cooking in it to help thicken our sauce up. After another minute or so, so four minutes, five minutes in the water total, we want to add our pasta to our pan and let the pasta finish in the sauce. It's going to help thicken it, it's going to help cook the pasta all the way through, and it's going to help make sure that the sauce sticks to it. Once our sauce is reduced pretty well and it's starting to coat the pasta nicely, we want to turn our heat down and we're going to add some creme fraiche and our menage butter to finish it out until it's nice and creamy. We're going to taste it and make sure that it tastes exactly how we want. If it needs a little bit of acidity because it's a hair salty, we'll squeeze some lemon in there or we might add a pinch of salt, just whatever it really needs to get it to where we're really happy with it. So now we're ready to finish things up and we just want a little bit of herb salad right on top of everything. I've got some mint, basil, oregano, and parsley from my garden. I'm just gonna tear it up and kind of make big leaves out of it and then I'm gonna zest a lemon into it and that's gonna be our, our garnish for everything.
now we're ready to serve. We just wanna put our pasta that's perfectly cooked and creamy and delicious in the bowl. I'm gonna add our little herb salad right on top and a little drizzle of olive oil if you want. And also don't forget to take a picture and tag iHeartPasta when you post it on Instagram. Thanks for joining us this week on iHeartPasta. Hope you enjoyed making Maltagliati with us. I'd like to say a thank you to our sponsor for this episode, Green Bean Delivery. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. With Green Bean Delivery, there's no contract or membership fees, just a $20 minimum order per order. On a weekly basis, you can find around 60 to 90 different produce items, over a thousand grocery items, including meats from Smoking Goose, breads from Amelia's, Circle Kombucha, and many other locally produced foods. Based on where you live in the community, you'll be given a specific day for delivery, and you can look at Green Bean Delivery as your online farmer's market to deliver straight to your home. Green Bean Delivery currently isn't bringing on new customers due to a recent surge in online orders, but if you join their waitlist, they'll notify you immediately as soon as they can create an account for you. Green Bean Delivery was founded in Indianapolis in 2007, it's family owned and operated, but if you live in Louisville, Kentucky, Cincinnati, Ohio, Dayton, Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, Fort Wayne, Indiana, or St. Louis, Missouri, you're in luck because Green Bean Delivery also is available for you.